Uh, first of all, to our country's courts, where the five men accused of killing Senzo Miyiwa expected to plead again as the trial starts afresh. Essentially, they're going to get an opportunity uh, to apply for bail again. Now, uh, Judge Ratamotla Kleng came out of retirement now to take on this case. Let's try and find out uh, what this actually means. And when we say clean slate, Slendelo Masikana, we mean clean slate, but we also are now learning a new word. Well, I certainly am. I hope I say this right. De novo. Is that right? De novo, meaning a fresh and new. That is what we're seeing unfolding here in the North Kauteng High Court in terms of court proceedings and the trial of the five men accused of the murder of Senzo Miyua back in October of 2014. You would remember that we began a trial last year in April, uh, but uh, due to the judge's ill health, that is Judge Chifu Maomela, his medical team informed the court that it was highly unlikely he would be able to continue to preside over the Mayua trial and of course other matters that uh, he was um, presiding over and so uh, from what we understand the judge president uh, of course uh, then has now appointed a new judge to take over the reins and that means that this trial must officially start afresh and what we saw yesterday uh, in essence I think was just a taste of what we can expect in terms of how Judge Rata Mokhatleng wants to conduct this trial. It does seem as though he is not going to allow or entertain any more delays. He wants to get going and uh, ensured that counsel um, would be able to proceed with the uh, calling a witness when we begin this morning. But to just unpack uh, some of what we saw yesterday and what we can expect today, I'm joined by legal expert from the UJ Law Clinic, that is Mr. Alton Hart. Thank you so much for your time this morning, Mr. Hart. Uh, yesterday we ended with uh, Judge Mokwakleng ordering that uh, Judy Care be speedily arranged for counsel for the defense, meaning legal aid would be covering the costs of uh, the attorney's legal fees, uh, but also we saw an order that a pre-trial conference take place yesterday afternoon to allow four court proceedings to continue with a witness today. So if everything happened accordingly, which I understand it did yesterday, uh, we are expecting the state to call, in, in essence, its first witness in this new trial. How do we expect them to proceed? Will we possibly see uh, Zandi Kumalo being the state's first witness in this new trial? Now, obviously, I think, of course, we look at um, the uh, subpoenaing of witnesses. So I think Sandy Kumala was subpoenaed to appear in court for the remainder of the week. So if they needed to bring now a new witness, maybe Tabu Musia or any of the other witnesses, they should have been subpoenaed. So if Zandi Kumalo is already there, then I think most probably the state would start with Zandi Kumalo. But I know Advocate Beloy would not have started the sequence as he started with his witnesses, because he might have a strategy in that. So for him to start with Zandi Kumalo, it might sort of have derail his strategy. And he might maybe say, okay, let me finish Zandi Kumalo. She is here. And then subpoena Tabu Musia to come now testify as the forensic and bring in the second witness as, and then Tumelo Matlala and then um, Tuala. But that is all we will see as if the trial starts at 9 o'clock. Then we will know exactly what the sequence is. It will also have a clearer idea of if the state is changing its strategy or if it's still on the same uh, tangent or angle with what they try to um, demonstrate to court to say that these five men is really the accused persons and the right accused that's in the box that is responsible for the murder of Senzo Muiwa. Mm. In terms of the witnesses that are, are going to be called and recalled, can we expect, of course, that we may not take as long with uh, each of those, in, in essence, who have already testified um, being recalled? And you would, of course, remember that in the first initial trial, we had a number of the witnesses as well doing dark identifications of at least one of the accused, Wangan Indanzi, who, of course, we know is the only one um, of the five accused who, ha who is not uh, convicted of any um, crime at this stage and possibly he could also have another opportunity at applying for bail. Bail application now because 
the guys has been in custody for more than three years now, so they can now go to another court. Obviously, not before Judge uh, Mutlating for a bail application, but another judge to actually consider the facts now, being that they have been in custody for three years, the trial is delaying and it's uh, affecting them negatively because some of them have lost jobs, their families are suffering, so that is a new fact in essence, irrespective if there was a, a previous bail application in the, and all those proceedings was nullified because that bail application was not before Judge uh, Chifiwa Maumela, it was before another judge. So now there's new facts that exist, they can now bring a bail, bail applications afresh and nothing stops them from doing that. And obviously, uh, one needs to now look at um, the scenarios for each one. And with doc identification, um, doc identification is not taken um, as, as weighing that that heavily, because you have five people in the doc. And if I ask you, Slee, identify one of the accused, you'll obviously look at the doc and uh, point them out. So that is the problem that we are faced with when you look at doc identification. We need to have ID parades to actually identify. But I think um, accused number two, because he doesn't have previous convictions, stand a very good chance of actually getting um, bail. But not uh, to say that the others won't get. They also have, it's only the guys that's already sentenced um, with long sentences. Bail application will mean nothing to them because even if they get bail, their sentences will not run out soon. So a bail application will be futile, a futile exercise for them. Mm. Then let's look at just how far we can get in terms of this particular sitting that we are expecting uh, in this trial. We know that um, we've been set down to sit until the end of the third term. That's around the 15th of September. Just how far do you think we can take this trial in this time frame? I think we can get with um, the way I saw that um, the judge was sort of half trying to sort out logistics in Edmund uh, pertaining to the trial. We can get to the state's witnesses being finished and getting into some of the defense witnesses to come and testify, if not get it too close. And that's given that we sit for full days and there's not these unnecessary delays. And the state will have to make sure that all the witnesses that they intend to use, that at least two witnesses is always subpoenaed to be at court. So if we finish with one witness, they can immediately uh, say you are excused and then call in the second witness, not say, OK, I have to now postpone to tomorrow so that I can get the other witness here. They need to make sure that the witnesses is always there's two at court. So I think the judge will also most probably look at that aspect because that is also where we lost a lot of time in um, the previous case, the one that was nullified nullified to say that we have to postpone for tomorrow because and also witnesses were like taking chances saying I'm unwell those type of things I think the judge will will have a will have a firm eye looking at these types of things and I think we can get very very close to getting um, close because most of the things was already sort of highlighted where the issues lie in our previous trial if I can call it that so that we can zoom into the real issues mm. that we need to now know what really transpired on the crime scene. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time this morning. That is legal expert Mr. Alton Hart just giving us some analysis ahead of court proceedings at 10 o'clock. But of course, Gareth, there is another case that we are watching quite closely. That is, of course, the judgment in uh, Dr. Nadipa Magudumana's uh, leave to appeal application in the High Court in Bloemfontein. We are expecting Judge Philip Lopser to give his judgment at around half past nine this morning. And uh, Dr. Nadipa will know whether or not she has been granted leave to to appeal her uh, arrest and deportation from Tanzania and take her fight for freedom to the Supreme Court of Appeal. Yep, so as you can hear, going to be a very, very busy day uh, in the country's courts. So you can go follow Slendelo uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, fast fingers on social media. Always good to follow for the updates if you can't be with us. Obviously, we'd love for you to be with us all day here on the channel. Uh, but if you can't, it's a good resource as well uh, between Slee on Twitter and also at ENCA on Twitter. Uh, it's a good resource to keep it with you wherever you are going.